Rafael, can you tell us where you are right now? Calling you from San Diego, California, sunny San Diego. Uh, on We are uh, right at one of our customers who has installed what we call the trifecta, solar storage that you see behind me in the container. You see the, the car parts above my head. You got some solar on the roofs as well. And EV chargers. We have more than 40 EV chargers on this parking lot. And what PowerFlex is all about is making sure that they all work together in synchronization. With all these assets on site, how is your patented software ensuring they are being smartly managed? Technology that PowerFlex brings to the market through a software suite that we call PowerFlex X can be uh, best illustrated with what we call adaptive load management or ALM. Adaptive load management is a technology that's going to optimize the charging of a large number of electric vehicles on a parking lot. So we have 40 here. We have up to 1,200 chargers at a given location if you look at some of our airport installations. And what we do is taking into account the requirements from the drivers. So the drivers are able to be identified at the charger thanks to a QR code and a mobile app. We take into account the signals that are sent by the grid, which gives us pricing that is going to defer depending on the greenhouse gas intensity. That's going to defer just depending on supply and demand. We take that into account. We make sure all those drivers, thanks to very complex algorithms that have been initially developed at Caltech and, and that we have perfected and optimized with solar, those algorithms allow to make all the drivers satisfied with uh, the amount of energy they have in their cars and limit the cost for the corporate customers that we are serving. So your solution is particularly designed for large scale charging networks. What is the sweet spot in terms of load sizes? If you look at solar, PowerFlex is the second largest uh, deployer of solar for commercial customers in the US. The average size of our system is right above one megawatt. And we uh, are typically encouraging our customers to maximize the, the amount of solar and storage when relevant. And it's increasingly the case in California uh, because once you start to, when, once you make the decision of building solar, you, you just wanna make the most of the mobilization uh, maximize the utilization of the crews that are going to come and install solar. And as far as EV chargings are concerned, what we have on average is right around 40. So right around 40 EV chargers at a given uh, site on a given parking lot. And uh, the customer typically start by asking for around 10 chargers. And then in the discussion, we show data that demonstrates that if you build those chargers, the drivers will come. And then if you're, if you're confident that the drivers will come, it's much more cost effective to build more chargers today with ALM. We do not need ALM adaptive load management. We do not need uh, very costly and lengthy upgrades. That's the beauty of this solution. We take whatever constraint is existent at the site and we maximize the number of chargers there. That is very important for uh, limiting the cost to the customers, but also it's very important as we were talking about for the benefit of the grid too, if you're managing those chargers and making them smart. Smart charging is not yet an industry standard. Uh, so what are you seeing in terms of demand specifically for solar optimized EV charging? It's true that a lot of our customers are starting with one of the technology. So it's not a solar only customer, it's a solar first customer because we know demand will come for EV charging in the future. We know demand will, may come from storage as well. Uh, so it is still in pockets like California where the tariffs are already reflecting the fact that if you are doing unmanaged charging, you're going to be penalized and, it, and you should be because you, uh, you are impacting the grid and you should be paying for this. But conversely, if you are investing in solar and you are able to maximize the charge with your own solar production, your tariffs are gonna go down. And economically, it's a no brainer for you that you should do solar and storage if you look over the long term. What matters is to see those tariffs evolving as the penetration of solar is increasing. So we are better reflecting the fact that you should make the most of the sun. You should harvest the sun as much as you can. And there's no better consumption pattern than people driving to the office and charging during the day. Those cars that you see behind me, they're going to be here for eight hours. 
they are perfectly fine with the type of managed charging that we have. You don't need a DC fast charger that's going to create very high peaks on the grid. You just harvest the sun and you can collect that energy in the cars. Many thanks for your five minutes, Raphael.